All right, we are in week six and we are looking at writing objectives this week. You will be reading chapter 10 in Oliva if you have the eighth edition. If you have the newest edition, then it's chapter nine. So just look for the word objectives in the title. And you, as your assignment, will be writing at least one objective for each curriculum goal or essential question you have for your revised curriculum. So what this means is some of you have three essential questions for your entire unit and you're just reiterating these questions, looking at them from different perspectives or angles in each unit. Um, so you might be writing three objectives for each essential question. Other people have 11 units and 11 essential questions. So you will probably be um, doing one objective as a sample. So it's just an example objective of what you could do in that unit. There are different frameworks for writing objectives. Um, for this course, we'll be using cognitive, affective, psychomotor framework. The, the cognitive is what's in your head, um, what we can't really see. It's about thinking. Affective is what we understand or believe. It's, uh, it's often connected to thinking. And some people criticize this, saying that's a very Eurocentric way of thinking. Other cultures don't separate the mind from the from our feelings, that thinking and feeling aren't separated things. Um, and then psychomotor is uh, being able to use your body. So um, cutting in a straight line or hopping on one foot, those are psychomotor kinds of skills. But that's not the only framework out there. Uh, you could use the behavioral, which is what is what you can see students do. It's observable. Cognitive is what they know, but it's not observable. And it, regardless of the framework you use, you can make the thinking visible in order to assess them. So even though the cognitive isn't visible, we make it visible either through thinking routines, or through discussions, or writing assignments. And then the affective to understand and believe. Another framework for writing objectives, knowledge, skill, somatic, attitude, process, experience. So if you want to see this article on making thinking visible, it is linked here for you. It's so good. I love these thinking routines. Um, the Harvard Project Zero has put a whole bunch of them together. And let me see if they give you any examples here. Um, think, puzzle, explore. So think puzzle explore routine supports inquiry it's kind of like no want to know learn but instead you ask students what do they think they know and then um, what what makes you say that helps them think about their thinking then what are you puzzling over is like what you want to find out, but it helps them think about problems they want to solve or design issues or places where they're curious or they need more learning. And then explore takes them through that. Uh, you can find even more thinking routines if you just search project zero thinking routines. Okay. Now, within each framework, there are different hierarchies or taxonomies or frameworks for the learning. Um, I know a lot of you use depth of knowledge, so I've added it here. 
There's also Bloom's taxonomy, but I like to think of Bloom's taxonomy um, as inverted because rather than wanting students to spend the most time at remember, we actually want them to spend the most time at the top with create. So create, evaluate, analyze, apply, understand, remember. This is the digital taxonomy. So thinking about how to use these verbs and integrate digital learning. And then for the affective and psychomotor objectives, there are resources here for you to look at. The affective circle Okay, well, the Word docs are not opening for me, but the resources are here for you. I do challenge you to try to include at least some affective in your curriculum. Um, psychomotor doesn't necessarily lend itself to every curriculum, but if it does, make sure that you use some of those too. Uh, here is another resource about writing objectives. Um, just to give you a little history um, as you are becoming experts in curriculum, you might want to know the history behind what objectives are and basically what we're, when we're talking about a learning objective, we're talking about a statement that describes in broad terms what the learner will gain from instruction. And the translation of curriculum into instruction really happens at these learning objectives. So we have the big aim, we have the curriculum goal, and then we have the learning objective. Okay, so start with your curriculum goals or essential questions. Put at least, at least one objective under each goal or question. So again, it might just be like a sample, it's not everything that is going to be done, but if you are revising the curriculum, then this is the objectives that you are revising for that one. Um, you're welcome to start including two or three, but you're not required to do so at this time, unless you only have three objectives. So I'm looking for 10 total, um, 10 total learning objectives. If you are using the Google Sheets URL with all of the tabs, make sure that you have the settings to make comments, not just view, so that I can provide feedback to you. And that is your assignment for this week. <laughs>